Also recently on the channel, I featured Seiko's upgraded version of the Seiko 5 Pilot's Watch. That was the SRPH31 with a blue dial. Today I have the upgraded version of the Seiko 5 Field Watch on a bracelet with a blue dial. This is the SRPG29. And apparently what Seiko have done is they've done away with the booklets. So you no longer get a booklet, you only get a warranty card in this little envelope. On the envelope, it tells you to go to their website to download the instruction manual and register your watch. So that's what they're doing now, a little bit different. I guess trying to save paper, maybe trying to save money. So the packaging itself is just a cardboard box. It's sort of a metallic look. It says Seiko 5 with that five that sort of looks like an S on it. And then of course you have a watch and here it is. So this is the SRPG29. It is the blue dial version. And I have to say, this is actually a little bit nicer than the pilot's watch that I recently reviewed. And I'll show you why. So you can see right here is the pilot's watch. You do get uh, applied indices on the field watch. It's the exact same case. So it's like a 39 millimeter, 39 millimeter and change case. I'll do measurements so you guys can see. Um, it's the same lug to lug. You get the exact same crown. You're getting the same exact hard lex crystal. You're getting the same case back. The case back basically exactly the same. You can see the movement from the back. It is the 4R36, so basically an NH35. You're getting the day date. Obviously, there's a little bit of a difference there as well. So you get a color match date wheel on here. Well, it's a black uh, date wheel on here that has white lettering uh, and then here on the uh, pilot's watch you're getting a white background uh, and different colors for the day so that's really the only differences uh, between the two watches is the dial and the bracelet you get drilled lugs on both and then on the strap on here obviously you're getting uh, what I think is a pretty cheap strap although the bracelet on the field watch isn't that much better but it's not bad uh, you do get solid links on the bracelet it is a press class we'll get back to that in just a second it's not horrible definitely considering the price that i paid now i paid 179 dollars and that was on amazon.com uh, now i believe that they have already gone up to i think 189 or 206 somewhere around there uh, it seems like when you buy a watch through amazon the price jumps a little bit however i'll put a link down below it will be an affiliate link so if you are interested in either of these watches i'll put my affiliate link down below um, definitely check them out on Amazon. Uh, the prices, like I say, uh, they do fluctuate, but you can get them uh, at a pretty good discount if you monitor them. $206 for this, I think is a really good price. $279 is what I paid, is an excellent price. Um, so very quickly, let's do the measurements. The measurements, like I said, are basically the same as that pilot's watch. 39.5 millimeters, including the uh, slightly domed mineral crystal or hard lex crystal on here it is just about 13 and a half millimeters thick crown is actually nice nicely signed uh unsigned so about 6.4 6.3 millimeters and then the lug to lug on here is a true lug to lug because you get female end links of around 47.8 so basically 48 millimeters uh, it's actually smaller i believe at the bracelet so 45.6 uh, so it wears true to its lug size, um, which is good, lug to lug. Uh, drilled lugs, as I mentioned, screwed in case back, 100 meters of water resistance, um, and you get to see the forearm movement from the back. Uh, it does hack, it does hand wind. You do get a pressed clasp on here. The entire thing is pressed. You only get one position of micro adjust. Not sure why they didn't lengthen this just a little bit. This is a very short clasp. They could have lengthened it just a little bit to give you a little bit more adjustability. There are no half links. Um, and the links look solid, but I don't believe they are because you could see some uh, folds in the actual bracelet. And I'll do a close up of that. You can see that they are sort of folded over. They feel pretty solid, but um, you know, it's, it's not the best bracelet. It's a little bit jangly but it's not that bad. And uh, considering what I paid, I think it's a really good price. Considering even at $206, I think it's a pretty uh, pretty good price. Uh, now, Loom on here, I think it's gonna be very similar to the Pilot's Watch, again, because the Pilot's Watch only had the dots that were actually uh, the perimeter of the dial that were loomed. The hands were liberally loomed, um, and then you had the pip also loomed. I think you're gonna get the same effect on here. 
these indices that are actually applied to the dial, which actually I have to say I like a lot better than the Pilot's Watch. You have actual applied indices, uh, you know, 12 to 1, very, very nice. And then you have the Seiko applied there below the uh, 12 o'clock. And then, of course, the S is printed. It just says automatic. I really like that script. I think it adds a little bit of, I don't know, it makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit, uh, I don't know, more expensive, I want to say, but I don't know. Uh, that may be just me. And then, of course, you have a 24-hour uh, scale on the inside of that 12-hour uh, scale. So uh, just, you know, sort of a little bit of a touch there. Uh, the hands are fence post hands. Like I said, those are loom. You have an arrow second hand. There's a little bit of a red accent on the second hand, uh, and that is also loomed. You have a push-pull crown, as I mentioned. Um, and it does hack and then hand. You have a push pull crown, as I mentioned. It does hack, it does hand wind because it is a 4R36. Uh, not the most accurate movement in the world, but really not that bad. We have a hang tag here. So the retail price on this is $275. It just says the reference number, the SRPG29. That's it. So very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist so you guys can see how this looks on my wrist. I'll actually throw the uh, other watch on my wrist as well, the H31 or SRP uh, H31 on my wrist so you guys could see that as well. Uh, very quickly, before I do, today I am wearing my Timex. This is the uh, basically one of my newer acquisitions. This is the Timex Giorgio Gali S1 in 38 millimeters. Um, just a really cool watch, uh, and I really love the design on it. It is a quirky watch, um, and it is also an expensive watch. I think a lot of people uh, think it's kind of overpriced. Uh, the review for this should have been out, uh, you know, yesterday, I believe. So um, definitely check that out. I will put a link to it uh, up above. And here is the, it's not size for my wrist just yet. Um, this is the uh, new Seiko 5 field watch, the SRPG29 on my seven and a half inch wrist. It is basically a 40 millimeter watch, just under 40 millimeter watch. And then you have a really nice lug to lug of around 46, 47 millimeters. Um, a really good looking watch, especially that blue dial. It really does pop and the indices sort of pop when you move them around. Um, I think it looks really nice. Um, it sort of reminds me like a, a very affordable, uh, Longines spirit. If you're familiar with that watch, uh, it gives you a little bit of that, maybe, you know, 50% of it or 40% of it for a fraction of the price, basically the tax that you would pay on that watch you could buy this watch. Not bad, not bad at all. I would do away with the day date, personally. I don't like the day date. I, I would rather a very clean uh, field watch. I, I like that look uh, of, a, of a dateless watch, especially when you have the applied indices. I would have rather had the three there uh, than uh, the uh, day and date. Personally, that's just the way I am. And here is the SRPH31 on my seven and a half inch wrist. This is the pilot's version. It's on a strap rather than a bracelet. It's the exact same price. So this is a $275 watch. This is a $275 watch. I have to tell you, um, this is a better value. Uh, at $206, I think both of them are around $206 on the Amazon website as of right now. Uh, this is an incredible value at $206 because you're getting a slightly nicer dial and you're getting a bracelet. I would definitely get it on the bracelet and then you could buy one of these straps for, you know, pretty much nothing. The buckle is really nothing special. Uh, I'm sure you can get one of these, an aftermarket version of it for like 15 bucks uh, off of Amazon if you really wanted one. Uh, so I would go this route and then buy the uh the strap now if you want a pilot's watch in particular then obviously you got to go with this i don't think they're making this on a bracelet though that's the problem um so if you like the look of the pilot uh that's that's uh, the only way you can go i would definitely go with the one on the bracelet i would go for the field watch that's me however i have bought both i'll probably end up selling one of them um it probably will be the pilot's watch because i do like uh the look of this a little bit better uh, anyway, really quickly, let's do a loom shot. I'll do a loom shot for both, just so you can see. So basically the exact same loom, just different colors. So uh, the hands liberally applied with loom. You have a little pip on the second hand, the arrow tip on that second hand, which is loomed. And then you just have dots for each one of the indices. 
Those are decently loomed. I would actually say that the Pilot's Watch is a little bit better. It's a little bit brighter. And then you have a little bit of an orange accent for the loom on the, uh, on the Pilot's. Um, but that's the only difference. I think that the hands are equally as loomed. Loom, not that great on these watches when compared to other Seikos, you know, outside of the Seiko 5 lineup. But there you go. Not bad. Uh, I think that even at the $206, $275, whatever the price you are paying for these, I wish that they had a Sapphire Crystal. I said this in the review of this watch or the unboxing that I did of this watch. I'll be doing a review on it. Uh, I just wish that they had a Sapphire Crystal. I don't know why they don't put Sapphire Crystals on these watches. Uh, Seiko have the economies of scale to do it. Uh, they don't do it because it is a cost-cutting measure. Uh, they're selling these watches. They're making money on these watches at $175. They're making money on these watches at $275. Um, either way, they have it. They can do it. Uh, but tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I really want to hear from you guys. Uh, I think that they are really good value, even considering they have a hard lex. Uh, I think they're a very good value, very good looking watches for the price. Um, that's that's really the case, I think. Uh, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. I have added links for both of these watches down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links. If you click one of those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. If you buy one of these watches, um, definitely I think they are worth it. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.